Hello everyone, my name is Elsie and I'm excited that I just completed a 15 week journey with the CTL Africa team on the 15 laws of invaluable growth by John C. Maxwell. From the law of pain, I also learned that every problem introduces a person to himself. Honestly, so you face a problem, you wouldn't know the, the, the things that you actually have within you. The journey for me personally was a wake up call. Before I joined this journey, I wasn't actually learning at all. I wasn't adding any logic to my, what I need. So the law of trade-off is saying that you have to give up to, to grow up. So things that I think are not going to have uh, you know, maximum impact on my life, I have to trade them off. I want to grow. I am not stopping now. I am continuing. And as far as I'm concerned, like it says, you cannot give what you don't have. I definitely will have to give what I have learned off to others and then get more so that I can continue giving. I am not going to be a reservoir. I am going to be a river. And therefore, I'm going to continue learning to be able to give off my best. Ordinary people can achieve extraordinary results on a consistent basis if they have a system, if they have a plan. Navigating through life without a coach or a guide can be very deceiving, making you come to think that you have achieved the highest or the best you can ever, or you have made the best of decisions. But until you become very intentional and take a good stock of your life, you would not realize that it's a mistake. Pain helps you to come out of your comfort zone. Uh, the law of intentionality and the fact that learning is a lifelong journey if you want to be significant. Emphasis on significance. Previously, I used to be very unintentional about the things I do when it comes to my family, my work, my Christian life, and basically everything that I do. In the pursuit of that growth, there are gaps. There are gaps that we need to conquer. These gaps include the knowledge, perfection, mistake, inspirational, timing, and assumption gap. And I will encourage you to be part of CTL Africa's 15-week growth journey. I encourage you all out there who need to live their life to be part of CTL Africa's growth journey. Please take advantage of this program and your life will never be the same. Thank you very much CTL Africa and continue to impact the world. God bless. Hi dear friend, my name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey. We set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth. Where do you want to reach in your leadership? Which area of your life do you want to grow in? Growth doesn't just happen. It has to be intentional. So in these 15 weeks, we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. We're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks. Every week we'll have a session with you. This program is limited to only 15 people. We're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey. So make a date with us and see you on the growth journey.
Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the leadership platform. My name is Samuel Ayim. Today, I'm at a location where my lighting is not that great, so you would be seen like a shadow of me. But I'm not a speaker, so don't worry. Our speaker has good light, and you're going to see her fully. All right, so you are welcome to the leadership platform. It is our pleasure every Saturday to uh, welcome you, to host you here on the platform to learn and to share with you. It is our objective to bring you men and women who are accomplished in their own ways and who are willing to share their knowledge with you. So go ahead and share um, the link both um, either on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live, or LinkedIn Live, whichever link you are on, please go ahead and share with your friends, share with your colleagues, your bosses, invite them to the room because we are really going to learn and we, because we have an amazing, amazing person who has been on this platform. I think this will be the fourth time she is coming here, and each time she comes is full of knowledge and sharing. So go ahead. Also, go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, we know so many of you join, you don't introduce yourself, but it is our pleasure to introduce you to the world and to announce you to the world that you are here. Please go ahead and uh, let's have your name and where you are joining from, and we will be glad to announce you to the world. We just showed you the growth journey, um, which we, we are starting the fifth cohort. So many people are learning how to grow. A lot of us don't know how to grow uh, because nobody taught us how to grow. Uh, we were only fed and given food and we grew physically. Um, and even that we needed to be taken good care of, go to hospital, dressed up, bathed and so on. So growth, it's not just an accident. The only accidental thing we don't have to prepare for in life is probably death. Um, you can't prepare to die, but as long as you live on this earth, you have to learn how to grow. And we have committed 15 weeks to help you do that. By the end of the 15 weeks, you would have developed the habit of growing intentionally. So please join. Uh, the current cohort uh, has just started with this week. We finished the first session, and, and it's not too late to join. When you join, we can catch up. I think there are only two or so places left, so um, please join us. All right, so on that note, let me announce those I can see here. I have a regular member, William Darfour uh, from Tema is here. I have also Dennis, who has announced himself uh, from Sakumono. I have Dixon Amankwa Kufo, uh, who is also with us. He's happy to be here. I have Boabin Bismarck from Takwa. Thank you, Boabin, for joining. Uh, I have Magdalene Ajua Chumesi joining from Accra. Please go ahead and introduce yourself and we would introduce you to the world. Now, this evening, we are discussing a very important subject in leadership, and it's the subject of stories. Those of us who grew up in the village, we grew up with stories. We used to call them, or we still call them Anansi Sem, you know, which was around this key character of Anansi. Um, for better, for worse, in so many ways, some of the characters that Anansi played um, were a bit curious, but there were a lot of lessons that we learned through stories. And stories have a powerful place in leadership and leading people. And so this evening, we are going to focus on stories and we are going to learn how to tell stories so that they are powerful, so that they attract. If leadership is influence, then how do we influence people? You influence people. One of the most powerful way to influence is true stories. And we have, we have our own lady who has a beautiful story 
of her own, but who also knows how to tell stories uh, to, to join us on this platform. As I said, this is her fourth time, so we all know Dr. Susie Akupulampo. Um, she's a great delight to listen to. My best friend, I like to say, and she likes to provide solutions to clients, to investors, to friends, and she has helped me with several solutions also. So we have her at this point. She's an investment banker, the CEO of Optin DC, and she, her journey spans a long way from data bank and until she formed her own company and merged with another company to form Optin DC, where she is now the CEO. But there are other very interesting, interesting things about uh, Susie that I like to share. All right, in 2021, she was the recipient of World Manage Wealth Manager of the Year Award at the Women in Finance and Investment Summit. And the same year, her company won the Investment Company of the Year okay, at the Ghana Accountancy and Finance Awards, all right? And in March 2022, Suzy was the recipient of Women of Excellence Award for Financial Services category. And at the seventh edition, that's at the seventh edition of the Ghana Women's Excellence Award. And, you know, Suzy has studied, she's doctor, by the way, so you can understand. She's a chartered accountant, of ACCA from the UK and uh, also associate of the Chartered Institute of Securities and Investment. She earned her doctorate in business administration and wealth management from Warden University USA. He hosts an MBA in finance from the University of Ghana and a BA in economics and sociology from the from University of Cape Coast. So he studied all across, north and south of Ghana and across the Atlantic. And there's so many things about Susie. If you want more, go to her website uh, or her LinkedIn page or to our website and you will know. But Susie is a great, great, great speaker because she's also earned the highest honors of Toastmasters. Uh, you know, so we know that she's going to deliver for us. Um, so on this note, I really am delighted and it is my privilege to invite my friend, Dr. Susie Pupulampo, to share with us the power of stories in leadership. Thank you very much, Susie. For Thank you very much. Honest. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, confirm that you can hear me. Hello, I can hear you very Hello. well. Hello, so good evening to everyone. Good evening. Right. I can hear Hello. you and I can see you, so go Great. ahead. Did you say we are friends or I'm your girlfriend? Recently you said you were going to make me your girlfriend. Please clarify. Everybody's uh, on the floor. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't want people to be jealous, <laughs> so I was keeping that somewhere. But uh, since you have accepted, so it's confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you once again for the opportunity <laughs> to use your. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right, you're taking me out of the studio. Thank you for bringing me back into the studio. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity one more time to use your stage to impart. Hello, everyone joining from everywhere across the regions. Welcome one more time to an interesting session. And today, we are all going to share stories. Everybody will share something on the stage today. I have only four to five minutes, and I'll try to keep to the time as we go through this session this evening. Right. On. All right. Can I have any confirmation that from anyone, Sam, if you can just send a hi just to be sure that my screen can be seen the power of stories in yes the we can we can see your your screen shared thank you so, so much 
So I, yes. my story, since we are talking about story, a young woman actively engaging in conversations with family on wealth creation and management. Because as Sam said, somehow we have been fed over the year. So we all assume that growth it's automatic, but it is not. It must be intentional. I enjoy living in the space of impact. That is why anytime Sam asks me to come back on the stage to share something, I really say, yes, I will do it for you. I love life. I live life. And I love stories. Stories are important to our lives. Stories inform what we do, the next steps that we take. I also invest in wellness because I believe in prevention rather than cure. I'm a Toastmaster, and I'm also a Rotarian. If none of us are doing anything in the social and educational space, please, let's take an active interest in doing things beyond our normal working lives. Once upon a time, time, time. We all love stories. Everyone loves stories. And everyone anticipates what will be said beyond once upon a time. Bearing that I don't have too much time, I will start with the importance of using stories in our engagement as leaders. Whichever way we see it, we will engage with people. Even if it's one on one with a group, with a larger group, we we'll still find ourselves engaging in the workplace, in our homes, in our churches, in our communities. So, whichever way it goes, we will find ourselves sitting or standing in front of people and having a conversation. So, how do we engage? To us as leaders, what is the relevance when it comes to storytelling? Why is it so important to move from the usual conversation, straightforward technical conversation, and move it into a story space so we all begin to appreciate the value of what is being said to us? And of course, I will conclude. And this is also the structure of a story that is a beginning, there's a body, and a conclusion. I will end with the storytelling skills because it's not enough to say, Leaders must share stories. How do we share those stories? Stories that stick. Whenever I have the opportunity to engage, I always go back into literature to pick on something that will support what I'm saying, because that is what it is to me to be a leader. That is always a reference point. In preparing for this engagement this evening, with all of you on the call, I wish I could see your faces so that it's more interactive. I'm inspired by Kendra Hall, a storyteller, keynote speaker, and an author. If oh, you haven't sorry, read yeah. this book, as a leader, sorry, your slides are not moving. Oh, really? It's moving at my end. Am I still on the first? Where am I? Uh, what, please tell me what you see, Sam. The, you are still on the cover page, the first one. I have really moved on. Okay. Let me drop okay. it and reshare and see. Okay. Yes. Let me know where you can see now, Sam. Sam, please confirm to me what you can see because it's moving. Okay, so we end. have now stories that stick. Okay, has the slide moved now? Please confirm it if it yes. has moved now. Move it again, let's see. Yes, it's moving now. All right, it's thank moving. you. Okay. Very much. Thank you. Okay, so thank you so point, much. I was making a point about this resourceful book I had to read to prepare for and gain the stories at stake by Kendra Hall. In the reviews about this book, some of the readers said, we don't have to be great writers to tell stories because most of the time people feel we can't write. We don't know how to put things on paper. So we are not in the space to be telling stories. We just need to know how to tell stories. So how do we learn how to tell stories? We must know that we are surrounded by a lot of storytellers. Like Sam was saying, and as he said, it's all over. Somehow as leaders, we must just learn to tell stories because it's very relevant to what we do in our organization. So please, this is where I would have loved to engage a bit more, ask a few of you to share some thoughts. But unfortunately, the screen that is presented to me, and I'm only seeing my screen, I'm, like, I'm not even seeing myself, I can't see you. So engaging with you is going to be quite difficult, but maybe I'll let some come in and say some few things. 
So please observe what I'll do for the next 60 seconds. My name is Akwini. My name is Akwini. I asked my mom a tough question at age six. Mama, why did you name me a penny? She explained it was a difficult birth. I almost lost you, my daughter, as I ended up in the theater in the 70s. So when you finally popped out, I had to praise God. And I said, a penny mau. So I named you a penny. Between this first slide, where I am just telling you my name as a penny, and this next slide, where I am actually sharing a story about how I was named. If you can drop some comments in the chat room, I'll let some pick them up for me along the way. Tell me which of them will stick with you. Which of them will let you remember my name anytime you see me anywhere? So this is the importance of storytelling that it sticks up with us. We remember some line in there will connect to the importance of what the person is telling you. So in her book, this was the foundation of the story that leaders must be able to serve the value in their businesses because the solutions reside in the value. Founders have safety belief and that is why businesses are best. So it is so important for us that as leaders, we build the skill in sharing the values that support the businesses that we lead. The founder story, Unless you don't meet an entrepreneur who was deep inside the beginning and the setup of his or her business. There's always the founder story that inspires, that motivates, that educates, that tells us what went wrong, how the mistakes were corrected, and how they managed to go through all the obstacles. And now they have a beautiful story to tell. The purpose. What is the purpose of the business? There must be an objective for us setting out our businesses or working in whatever capacity that we are in. So what inspires the people in the organization to continue coming to work, to continue having that identity? Oh, I work with Octane DC, and for that reason, I wake up every morning and go to work. And of course, the customer story. What specifically are we selling? The products and services. What value addition? So these were the foundation that was laid by Kendra in trying to press home the importance of leaders learning how to tell stories with their businesses. So now let me come into the conversation while we're on the call. The importance of using stories in our game. So I want to believe my slide is moving now. It's important that I have some feedback. Please let me know if my slide is moving now. Sam, if you're on the call the importance of using stories in our engagement. The, the slide is moving. All right, I will drop my screen now and I'll kindly ask Abigail to play this video for me for optimal video, uh, audio from everyone. So Abigail, if you are on the call, please play my first video for me. Thank you. What unites people? Armies, gold, flags, stories. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Nothing can stop it. No enemy can defeat it. And who has a better story than Bran the Broken? The boy who fell from a high tower and lived. He knew he'd never walk again, so he learned to fly. 
He crossed beyond the wall, a crippled boy, and became the three-eyed raven. He is our memory, the keeper of all our stories. The wars, weddings, births, massacres, famines, our triumphs, our defeats, our past. Who better to lead us into the future? Bran has no interest in ruling, and he can't father children. Good. Sons of kings can be cruel and stupid, as you well know. <laughs> Stories definitely connect us as families, as friends, as colleagues. Who better to lead us into the future is the one with the stories. So somehow we all lean towards the person who has some lived experience to share, some pain to share, some exciting results to share. And that is what we all remember. Our dear friend, John Maxwell, recently doing the lift to late 2022 session told us some great things of a story and if you were in the session you will observe that every single leader that came on the stage had a story and these were stories that were lived experiences so it is not about somebody else which is also a good story but it's more about their experiences as business leaders and of course John told us that stories helps us to engage with our audience. It's as important and simple, just like that. But the critical thing in there, that we must learn the skills of taking ourselves out of the story and bringing other people in. So the focus is not always on us. Yes, I've told you the meaning of my name, but that is not why we are on this call. So we have to move on and get other people involved in the story. Something we'll talk about along the way, building a story bank. The only way you can draw down on the investment is if you have the investments. The only way or the reason why you go to a bank to withdraw money is if you have money in there. So the only way you can be drawing down on stories is to build a story bank. So it's important that we all put that down as a pet project for every leader to build a story bank. Obviously, we have seen so far that stories helps leaders to sell the value and not price. A number of us cannot do without Apple. A number of us cannot do without Samsung because of some value that we have there. The fact that I can synchronize every single information of my, on my phone, on my watch, on my laptop, on my iPad, makes it difficult for me to just switch. So there's some value in using the products. Of course, stories aid in defining the objectives of any engagement because there are lessons in there. Once you connect, there must be lessons. There must be value for the time of the engagement. And most definitely, my dear friends, I've seen some comments coming in that they said they will not forget my name because the story will stick and the story will take each and every one of us. There was a book I was reading as well in preparing for this. I'll share a slide for you to see the book. And I did something very crazy when I got to chapter six. And I was just reading about, I was testing about authenticity in the writer's thoughts and what he was putting across. And when it comes to the authentic leader, I want to believe that the three gentlemen you are seeing on our stage now, could not get his role. Nelson Mandela, Reverend Mr. Mensa Otterbill, John Maxwell, our own man. Mandela said, an authentic leader understands his or her purpose, values, self-discipline, and which is built into relationship. And the leader leads with compassion. Mensa Waterbill. Leadership is not about position, title, having people to bow to us. 
it's about service. It's about connecting with people and building that relationship. And what did John say? Great leaders know when to accept mistakes and take responsibility to fix it on behalf of everybody. So whilst I was reading 18 Minutes by Peter Bregman, finding your focus, mastering distraction, and getting the right things done at the right time, there was a piece on recognizing your own potential. It struck me because of what Peter said. And I would have loved to have someone on the call read this so that there's a bit of an engagement with what I'm doing. I don't know if Sarah can read for me, but if not, I'll just go ahead. And this was what the writer wrote on that page. Okay. Sarah, if you can, thank you. Please read for me. This is the one in Susan Doyle. Yes, please. Excellent. I just love her. Why we are fascinated with Susan Doyle. Susan Doyle, who performed on the UK television show Britain's Got Talent, captured the world's attention. In case you missed it, he was a 47-year-old unemployed charity worker who lived with her cat in a small village in Scotland. As soon as she walked on the stage, the audience began to snicker and roll their eyes. Simon Paul, the show's host, asked her some three performance questions in his famously condescending style and to the audience's enjoyment she answered awkwardly. She was painfully ordinary, and everyone was prepared, looking forward even to see her fail. Thank you very kindly, Sarah. The reason why I wanted to share that, and the point I was making about the authentic leader, that as a leader, as we begin to engage, as we begin to share stories, whether we are writing it or we are just speaking it or telling people about it, it's important that we ensure that a relevant reference can be checked. The moment I read this piece by Peter, I stopped reading and I went on YouTube to check out exactly what he was saying about Susan and to confirm exactly what she was doing. I'm going to drop my screen one more time. I have the video, but my volume is a bit low. Abigail will be kind to share it from her end. What I needed to do is to observe the very, very beginning of the show and the stream end of the show. That is where the lesson is for me. Abigail, I'll drop my screen so you share yours. Thank you. I'll be trying to share. Hi, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay, uh, Susan, and where are you from? I am from Blackburn near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of, it's a collection of uh, villages. I had to think there. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. <laughs> and that's just one side of me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but here's hoping it'll change. Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine Page. Like what are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. Okay, big song. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. When Hi, Abigail.
Megan, you can hear me and move to the very end of the video. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, right, what's your name, darling? My name is Susan Boyle. Okay, uh, Susan, and where are you from? I am from Blackburn near Bathgate, West Lothian. It's a big town. It's a sort of collection of, it's a collection of uh, villages. I to think there. And how old are you, Susan? I am 47. <laughs> and that's just one side of me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the dream? I, I'm trying to be a professional singer. And why hasn't it worked out so far, Susan? I've never been given the chance before, but he's hoping it'll change. Okay, and who would you like to be as successful as? Elaine Page. Elaine like Page. That. What are you going to sing tonight? I'm going to sing I Dreamed a Dream from the Miserables. Okay. Big song. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Time gone by. Okay. All right. Abigail, I think I, maybe you didn't it didn't download fully at your end. Um, let me just pick it up from here. But the lesson is really at the end of the video. Let me see if I can perform some magic with it from here. Please let me know. drop this and just pick up on the lessons just to save some time for all of us the lesson in there for me was um how the judges observe <laughs> that how they observe that they were wrong in terms of their perception of who was standing in front of them and at the end of her performance they accepted their error in misjudging her and actually apologized. And that's what they're sitting for me as a leader in whatever that we do. Let me continue by sharing the relevance of storytelling in leadership. I want to believe that I'm still on the screen and everybody can hear me. So when we share stories, when we build the skills in storytelling as leaders, we have better chances at success every time. Because stories are useful skills, as I mentioned earlier on, in sharing the vision, because it's a product we are selling. And what is the vision behind that product? It helps us to position the objective of our business much better through stories. It's much easier for our audience to appreciate the reason why we are standing in front of them and sharing our goals and aspirations with them. And when we begin to use stories in our delivery, we achieve results with minimum effort. Because sometimes you don't have to talk too much. But once your audience grabs the message, action is the next thing that they have to do. It's important for us to know that when we place calls through our clients, we must easily make sure that it's a sell call and not a wasted call. Because sometimes some of the cut calls that come through, you're wondering, are they really selling or they are just making a call? And as I said, if a product like Apple, the focus is on the value of using it and not on the price. It is about the price. A lot of us would not be using the products. 
when we connect with stories, one thing that we do is that we connect better with people. And that is what stories does. Stories, being what they are, resonates better with our audience. They don't forget it. So we must know that it's something that when we begin to build, long after we have left the stage, the audience will remember us for one thing or the other. Stories also put us in a position where we begin to lead with empathy because you have experienced something, even if it's not a lived experience. You've heard someone's story, and for which reason you are better in engaging, especially in your decision making about the human resource available to you. Stories, like I said, everybody loves stories. So it's easy to gather people around the table. Once we know there's someone in there who takes with stories and forever, those stories will stick with us. And one other thing that story does when it comes to connecting with people that we are able to create loyalty out of people. Because when people hear the stories behind the reasons why we exist, the reasons why our companies exist, the reason why we keep going to work every day, I tell you, Loyalty is what is created. Let me move on and share some other aspects. Because the skills of storytelling is what we all need on this call. So someone will say, okay, so how do we tell the story? I made a very important point about building the story bank. So let's look at the anatomy of a story. A story has a structure. There's an intro, there's a preamble, which is the hook. So most of the time when we hear once a poor the time, everybody drops whatever they are doing. The eyes are lit and they want to hear what next. Of course, there must be a reason for engaging. So the body, what are the main things? What are the objectives? of the story and the conclusion that is where the lessons are the conclusion of the story stories are things that if you know and build the skills in you must know and realize that they must be long enough to cover the subject but short enough to be interesting as Winston Churchill will tell us so a story must have a structure so it's important to learn how to tell stories. So storytelling is also a skill that must be learned. If we don't learn the skill, we begin to start from one end, we are all over the place, and we can't make anything out of what we are trying to say. So the art of building a story bank, which is where the real work is when it comes to stories, because it's easy to just pick someone's story and share. But I tell you, the best stories are the ones that are about us. Building a story bank. One thing we must begin to do as leaders, as three things I'll leave with you on the call. Let's begin to observe more and not to just see. If we are among the crowd and there's a shout all over the place, Catch him, catch him, catch him. He said, thief, catch him. That is what everybody is seeing. But out of the blue, what you have observed was when Kwesi pulled that basket from the old lady, he ran behind a wall. And what he went to do there was to pull out the bread out of the basket, basket, sorry, and was eating it. So in no time, you have observed that this is just a hungry young boy. He's really not a thief. The world is seeing him as a thief. But what you are seeing is a hungry boy who just wanted some food to eat. So when you begin to see beyond what others are seeing, then you are building your own bank of stories that you can use to share. 
as leaders who are moving into the space of learning how to sell, tell stories, we must begin to listen and not hear. A number of us engage on this platform on a weekly basis. Some of us come every week. When we hear, what do we do with what we hear? Do we listen in such a way that we begin to put everything that we have heard into practice? Because one thing hearing and the other thing putting what you have learned into practice. Very important for me is that as leaders, we begin to speak and not just talk. There's a great difference between talking and speaking. Sam will tell you, he has been talking his whole life. Now it's time for him to learn how to speak. And that is a leader who is beginning to see the difference between talking and speaking. When we talk, we just talk. Anything that comes out of our head and our mouth, we just say it. Whether people understand what we are saying or appreciate it, it's secondary. But when we speak, a number of things must happen. We are either educating, we are motivating, we are inspiring, or we are entertaining. That is why with some great comedians, there's always a lesson. No matter how much they make you laugh with their stories, there's always some lesson in that story. So the defining moment for us as leaders on this call is that we must begin to listen and not just hear, we must begin to observe and not just see, and we must begin to speak rather than just talk. When it comes to story, you must define your style. We are looking at the authentic leader, so everything you do must be about you. And the best stories or activities are lived experience, what you have gone through. You must define the style. Either it's a tall tale, like we call in a part of the world, Tony. Some is a greater story, personal stories, anecdotes, other people's story, fiction. Whatever style you decide to use during your engagement, you must do it to perfection. So preparation is very important. If you're using other people's stories, it's important that the needed reference is given or the needed acknowledgement is given. If it's a total, even that, there must be a structure to it. If you go to work on Monday morning in front of your colleagues, you're like, guys, I had a dream. Guess what? I'm the next president of Ghana and I was elected unopposed. Nobody was in the dream with you, but you had a dream. That was what you saw. Some may think to this a total, keep dreaming on. But I tell you, you make people laugh. But for the rest of the day, they'll remember your funny story first thing in the morning. When it comes to personal stories, it's important that when you build a story, it doesn't just stay in your head. I usually build my story when I'm all by myself. Most of the time in the mornings when I'm walking by myself, I'm observing, I'm, you know, just watching things that goes around me whilst I'm on the walk. By the time I come home, I have a story. And I make sure that I sit there and I write it down. I do not write a full story. But of course, points for me to go back to and flesh it out. Sometimes when I'm bathing, that is where the stories come back. And the moment I'm out of the bath, I am sitting down to write, taking some notes that I can go back and use and flesh out. So it's not enough to just dream or imagine and keep the stories in our heads. Because we want to learn how to build a bank of stories. So it's important that we begin to write and store them. That's the only way it's easy for us to pull out. Set a stage. Stories are acts, such a stage. There's a beginning, there's a middle, there's an end. Of all the ends in the world, he walks into mine. That's the end of the story. That is where you wanted to begin from. We gathered for lunch. And for all of us, we're wondering where Andrew is. 
Andrew, the guy who could dance so much on stage, and for so long we could not find him. And that's the middle of the story, and that's where you want to start from. Stories must have suspense. So whether you start from the middle to the end, back to the beginning, or from beginning to the end, you must define the story. Very important is to engage the mood of your audience at the time of sharing the story because you want to make an impact. So if the hook is what to get the impact, what's about the time? If that's what to get the impact, that's fine. But if the end of all the ends in the world is what to get their attention, it is for you to say that and show those skills. Let's remember, it's a story we are telling. Stories have lessons. Stories have characters. Stories are set in periods. There's humor. There's something that must. There's some excitement out of the story. The year was 2022. The month was November and the date was the 12th. We all gathered on the platform on CTL. And guess who was on the call? Dr. Susie Akubukula. That is a period. And that is what people will remember. There's always a character. So you must name characters in the story. If it's your own story, yeah, that is you. So your name in the story, it's okay. If you're writing under other people and you need to use their real name in the story, what I do is to seek their permission depending on what I'm writing. Or if not, you use other names to reflect the same. So we must remember that it's important that we plan in terms of our engagement. Audience analysis is something that is very, very important because the stage is different every time, depending on what you are aiming to do. This stage is very different. If I was doing this in a physical environment with all of you around and I can see you eyeball to eyeball, I tell you, it would be a totally different engagement because I like laughter. And I want to engage in such a way that we are laughing and cracking jokes and it's fun. But now I find myself behind the screen and it's just me. I can't even see you. So the engagement is still very different. So how do I even begin to laugh at myself so that I can also imagine you laugh at the other end? So it's very important that we learn that with stories, there's work that we need to do. It doesn't just happen especially when you want to be a good storyteller. For every leader that was on the stage, for us in October, for us to listen to, I tell you, a lot of preparation went in there. For every single story that they shared, a lot of preparation went in there. So it doesn't just happen if we wish that we become storytellers. My dear friends, I was trying to make some points with the video, but there was a bit of some delay. So let me say that the points that we use or the quotes that we use to introduce me, I have learned that people will never forget what you said. People will forget what you do, but people will never forget how you made them feel. But my Angelo, it's so important that we are able to tease out the difference between just using words on people. Because the words that comes out of our mouths make or unmake people. And like I keep telling everybody, time is not on everybody's side. So you don't want to break someone down with your words. So whatever we say to the people that we work with, it's important for us to know that at every point in time, impact is what it must be. All we need is one small positive thought in the morning. And for the rest of the time, life is what it is. Words put pictures in our minds. Pictures in our mind impact our feelings. How we feel impact our habits and performance, which affects our destiny. Perfect picture. It's so much story when we see image. A reason why I decided to use quite a bit of image in presenting to you this evening. 
because people remember what they see even more than what they just read. So as leaders in our engagements, we must introduce a bit of drama in what we do. But that is what people will remember. I like a lot of role play when I engage, but that's what people will remember. So whatever you need to do as a leader in engaging with people is what is important. The very last quote, the purposeful leader understands the important role that their story contributes to the clarity and direction of their leadership. Leadership is difficult. Leadership can be lonely. Leadership can be pain, especially when you feel you are doing all you can. But somehow, your constituency is not seeing that. It can be painful. So sometimes, it helps to come back to remind people of how the journey began, where the evidence are, and how far we have all come. So those are the things that people will begin to see and remember, and for which reason they are positioned better in terms of their reaction. So stories, as we have seen on this call, I wish we had a bit more time, my 40 minutes is up by my own clock here. It's so important to us as leaders in engaging. And anytime we engage on a live to lead stage, it's all stories. Every time John Maxwell speaks, it's all stories. So it's important for us as leaders to learn that writing it out is also important. We shouldn't leave it in our heads. Let's write it down. And let's begin to build a bank of stories. Sam, thank you very much. I'll take questions from here. Thank you so very much. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That was so good, so great. Um, I guess at this point, um, we will just have to go and see what people are saying because there's a lot of, uh, I think there was a lot of engagement at the beginning. Let's see who is on the call. Um, Abigail, let's take a short break and let's see who is on the call. Let Susie take some water. <laughs> great, great, great lessons here. Thank um, you. We'll come back and see if there are questions. Put your questions and comments down. We'll come back to you right now. Hi, dear friend. My name is Samuel Ayim and I'm the CEO for the Center for Transformational Leadership. And I'm bringing to you the growth journey we've set aside 15 weeks of growth to help you to be intentional about your growth where do you want to reach in your leadership which area of your life do you want to grow in growth doesn't just happen it has to be intentional so in these 15 weeks we're going to have a special coaching sessions with you to be able to grow to where you want to grow and to be able to grow yourself you need to know yourself a lot of us are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth we're going to help you in all and more within these 15 weeks every week we'll have a session with you this program is limited to only 15 people we're going to have 15 people for 15 weeks and we're going to learn 15 great growth lessons on this journey so make a date with us and see you on the growth journey great thank you so much um for that and Doc, thank you so much. A lot of learnings. I've learned a lot. Um, I've learned a lot. The power of stories um, to, to, to help us as engage. Well, mm -hmm. that's the most important thing. It helps you to engage. It helps you to connect. And I also like the encouragement to build a story bank. You have to write your stories down. You have to write the story down. But for me, one of the big takeaways, don't just see, 
if you want to build your stories, don't just see you. Because even the blind man who has no eyes can still see. So you have eyes. Go beyond just your eyes. Observe. And that means seeing with all your other senses. Mm. Do not just listen, but hear. When you listen, it just passes here and goes out there. <laughs> but hear what that means. Listen to the person's emotions, the feelings, the agony inside. You go beyond the words. Do not just speak. Do not just talk, but speak. A lot of us, we talk. In Ghana, we talk. Oh. Susie, we talk. Oh. We talk a lot in Ghana, but nobody is you know, observing anything. Nobody is hearing anything, and nobody is speaking. Everybody is just talking, 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 talking. Thank you so much for those uh, words. Um, and I believe many more people. Please put into your into the chat what your learnings are, what your takeaways are, and we would announce it to the world. Let me see who is here uh, again. We have Father Douglas Kwamwabwati. He says, thanks for another uh, learning day. Thank you so much. God bless you, uh, the Boatin. Um I have Natalia is here. He says, of course, the story around your name is key, ma'am. All right, so that's great. And Madeline said, and that was to your question about the difference between just my name is and the story. And she says, I will always remember the story behind Akwene. All right, your mom uh, thanking God. That's Dixon says, your mom thanking God because she nearly lost you. Hence the name Akwene. You will always remember that. Regina Okwe is here. Thank you, Regina. Ibram Aguzi is here. The story behind your name makes your name itself easier to remember. All right. So that's true. Um, Dixon says, H is just a number with confidence and focus. H does not matter. Just believe in yourself. I think this is to the story of Susan Boyle. Mm -hmm. All right. Jonas Aume says, great submission. Once again, Dr. Susie, uh, good vibes. Great. All right. We, we want to see if you have questions also. Dixon says, great presentation, ma'am. Um, he says, is it good to often use yourself in stories? If yes, how will hearers say about you? So that's one question there, Susie. Uh, we'll come back for your responses. Uh, people, some people don't like to talk about themselves. They don't want their, their name in the story. Where do you where, build the balance? William yeah. says stories are to be penned. Today we can pick all stories from Kwame Nkrumah, Mandela, your master, etc. The story of the journey uh, cohort can be told. All right. Uh, okay. William was on the growth journey. All right. Okay. Great presentations. He says, Dennis says, great presentation stories are like parables. Okay. <laughs> the parables are stories. All right. Susie, uh, there was only one question. Your comment yeah. on the que comments. Uh, please go ahead and put your co your learnings in the chat put your comments in the chat if you have any questions we'll be happy Susie is always ready to share more she has more to share don't let her go with them Susie, over to you i wish we could have one participant prove to us that he or she did not only hear what i said but was listening yes so if we can have That's one person post a short story in the form of a question that would be very appreciated. Any one of you oh. just post a short story in the form of a question to me and let me answer you. And before I All go, right. now, I was trying to indicate that I was trying to make a point of the video on Susan Boyle, and I'd like to encourage everyone to go on YouTube and watch her. The point I was trying yeah. to make was really at the beginning when the judges perceived something else about her and then at the end of the day their feedback to her and that is what we must begin to learn as leaders 
that even when we are sharing our stories, if it's a personal story or if it's about other people, there is a way for people to check the story. So that is not a space for us to try and say the untruth about the situation. What we are trying to do is to encourage people to move on. So it's not a space for you to be telling something about your product that is not the truth. That is not the result for which you are aiming to see. You want people to pick up on what you are doing. So the question that William was asking that, is it good to often use yourself? I tell you, the best stories are your own story, myself. As Toastmasters, our very first story that we share with our audience is what we call the icebreaker question. And that question is about you, who you are, where you have been, what you have done, and what you think you are ready to impart to the world. It's yourself. So most of the time, you build your stories with yourself first. And when you talk to people, that is what you do. I have a blog post. Most of the characters I have in there are about myself. And then I move to my children, my husband, and then my friends. So the stories usually are about your own activities and what you engage in. Those are the best stories and the easiest stories that you can get. Or share. And like we were cancelled by John Maxwell recently in October. At a certain point in your life, you have to learn to involve other people in the story. That is where teamwork begins to come in. Because wherever we get to in our life, whatever stage we are in, it's not just about our own strength or our own doing. Others were able to support us. That is where you learn to move the story from just I, I, I. And you begin to introduce we or they into the story. So it's not always a good reference point that every time she speaks, it's about her, it's about her family, it's about her achievements. No. You must be able to draw other people's experiences in. So the stories we share must not just be our story. The slide I had on the type of stories that we can share. It's not just our personal stories or lived experiences. We can share others by drawing in other experiences too. Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. But as you're saying, your story is powerful. It's your experiences. When you are teaching something and you have been in the picture, it is different from where you are just, you know, theorizing. Okay, so it's important. But it's not mm -hmm. just coming and blow your horns. One of my lecturers uh, in secondary school, he was called Solomon. And he used to say that, look, I'm Solomon, so I'm supposed to be wise. And he was just going on. One student was at the back and he says, sir, you are blowing your horns. <laughs> and then he stopped the class and said, who said that? class was quiet everybody was just quiet and then the guy slowly owned up he called his name joseph if you have a horn and you don't blow it who will blow it for you and then the whole class, you know got, you know started laughing so if you have a horn blow it because nobody will blow your horn for you tell your story thank you so so much Susie. All Thank right, you. so that is a great submission. Stories are like a parable. He said that Bright says, thanks so much, Susie. I've learned a lot. He says, what is the difference? I think that's a question between sharing your problems and telling a story to your friends. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that's a question for you. All right, Thank you. thanks so much. Rosemary. Amano says, God bless you so much. I really appreciate today's lessons. Okay, so, yes, so there's one more question there for you. What's the so I think, I think that is from uh, Bright, right? So yes, the from skill, Bright. Right, the skill we are learning here is storytelling. And the point I was making about telling stories is that you must aim to achieve a number of things. You are educated. That's not a space for you to share your personal problems. You are selling a product. You are selling a service. You are giving education about how to use the product. You are inspiring. You are motivating. You are sharing your story about how difficult it was for you to find a job. That you are in this space because you did not stop the applications from going through. It was on your fifth application. 
that you have been finally appointed as the business development manager for the job. That's an inspiring story for anyone who has done it just the once, twice, or three times and think it is enough. I can't go back to that organization. Or use is to motivate. Pick someone's struggle and share it. Or pick your own struggle and share it. We all know where John Maxwell started. We all know how far Nelson Mandela came. He didn't give up. He had one thing in mind, his, his, his people and his purpose on this earth. Those are motivation. Are you entertained? So story, the space of story is not for you to share problems. That is not the space. So it's difficult for me to even tell you what the difference between sharing your problems or telling stories. No you are supposed to get some positive results out of the engagements with people. So it is not the problem of the organization that you are supposed to go and share or you are going to share or your own personal problem. And one thing I must say to, I think, William, is that a number of times, the only way we can check if what we are doing is right is to request for others to observe what we do and give us feedback. Because if we don't receive the feedback, we assume that what we are doing is what our audience need. Before this call, I have shared an evaluation form with Sam. I said, Sam, observe what I do. These are the areas I want you to observe for me, how I engage with the audience, my presentation skills and everything. And let me know what I can do in terms of improvement. So that is me putting myself in a space where I am asking someone to observe what I'm doing and give me feedback for improvement. So the only way you can even check if your stories are beginning to be more about yourself than others is to begin to ask people to observe you when you speak or to even read what you write and give you feedback. So Bright, please note that storytelling is not a space for sharing problems. No, we are to encourage, we are to inspire and educate. So that is not a space to bring people down with our personal issues. Even if you have personal issues, find a way of turning them into stories and share them with effort that you put in to get the best results out of the problem because the, the, the story is the result that you got out of it that is where the story is it's not about the problem thank you so much and remember we are talking leadership here the power of influence getting people together that is where we are looking at so stories mm -hmm. Uh, in, in, in the role of stories in the leadership process. So remember, it's not to go and tell problems and just despair. No, <laughs> it's not to go and propagate story uh, uh, problems and, and, and discourage people. But whatever the situation, <laughs> our purpose is to lift people up. Your purpose as a leader is to add value, not to subtract value. So your stories must add value to people. Thank you so much. Um, I'm seeing, uh, okay, Rosemary say, God bless you so much. I really appreciate today's lesson. Iram Agozi says, some of the best storytellers I know are herbal medicine sellers, <laughs> okay? What storytelling techniques do they <laughs> employ to get and sustain our interest in the buses and trotters? All right, you wanted people to tell stories. Now there's a story there of, of uh, herbal medicine sellers who medicine heal all kinds of diseases. What storytelling method is that one? I will, I will, cl I will classify that as a human, a human approach to selling. There's a, there's a tall tale approach as well, which is exaggeration. Um, exaggeration will actually just get people to laugh and move on. In humor, there is a bit of lessons that must be learned or some experience that you must pick on. And herbal medicines, whether they have tried it on themselves or not, it's a different matter. But they know what they are holding. And sometimes the funnier the sales skill, the easier it is for someone to say, let me just pick one of these and then they move on. So for me, it's the approach is to get you excited about the products that you are tempted to just pick one and go and try this for the sake of it. So that is, that is, that is what I can say about that one. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let me bring Sarah here. I know that she's listening and she's taking a lot of notes. Sarah, um, 
what do you I, say to Susie? What questions do you have? Comments? Uh, the comments I have is that uh, even as uh, Dr. Susie um, uh, builds her bank, I have noticed the way she does it, that she has set certain rituals. And just like uh, John Maxwell said, every day he writes, every day he reads. So every day she is walking, and as she is walking, she is observing. As she observes, she comes back and she writes. So those are three of her rituals that I, I observed mm -hmm. on this board. So the question I'm asking myself is, okay, if Dr. Susie is doing that, what am I doing when I go and walking? Am I observing as she does? Am I listening? What can I learn from that? So that is what I'm taking away. And also, he did mention the issue of preparation. Mm -hmm. preparation and that is something also that John talked about, about the law of preparation. You know, and therefore, if that is really key for us as leaders, are we doing that? I'm asking myself, it's a question I'm asking myself. How am I preparing for everything that I do? So that's my takeaway, Dr. Suvi. I've taken so many notes. I don't want to talk too much to leave the floor for others to really come up with their questions and things. So thank you very much for tonight. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. In, addition, in addition to what you have observed, I actually have a blog page in WordPress that I share a lot of my story. So I'm not just speaking about someone who is not practicing what she's doing. When you go to my WordPress page, I have so many stories there. And the stories are largely lived experiences. Like Sam has said, a lot of things that I have practiced or I have gone through are things that I have put there. So when you put your space in the leadership position, you begin to talk about something. It should be very easy for your audience to confirm what you are saying, that you are actually living the experience. And that was why when I was read, reading the book, and then the writer was talking about a show. I quickly dropped the book and I went on the internet to look through the show and confirm exactly what he was talking about, about people finding their potentials and getting out of it. So it's not enough to just wish that we become something. A lot has to be done with action. And there's, there's so many things that happen around us every day, every time. From the time we wake up, through the whole day, through work and come back. There's, there's so many activities that if we can only pause and observe, we'll be amazed about how much we can gather and begin to share in our attempt to get people to do certain things for us. So the doing is also important, but it comes with a lot of discipline, Sarah. It yeah, comes with discipline. Add on to this the fact that you said you are blogging. So, part of journaling is really important. If you cannot blog, get a book and write. Those of us who are BBC on the power computer, we have a book. We, we take notes. So, if you can blog, please <laughs> put a journal and write in it. It's also a way of capturing and, and building your story back. Thank you. Yes. Thank Great. You Thank you so much. Uh, Sarah, thank you for those interventions. And Susie, thank you for those additions. I'm not seeing any more comment apart from Dixon, who says storytelling is to educate, motivate, and add value to hearers. Great. All right. So people are picking some lessons there. So uh, on that note, I'm going yeah, to I'm ask... Sorry. If I can add one more thing. I spoke about the yes, importance yes. of audience analysis. Yes. Before we engage. So the point everyone was making that how come medicine sellers in buses and churches are able to get us to buy their things or we listen to them. At, at that space, what you need is a bit of humor. So if you have someone standing in front of you and we know the way medicine sellers are, they have all sorts of exaggerated things um, they will say about the medicine that will get you. So that is very appropriate for them to get us to buy. But as leaders, we must know and audit our audience before we engage. Know the type of people you are going to stand in front of and speak. If it's a professional environment, the story must be relevant to that environment. Uh -huh. If it's an easygoing environment, you guys are all meeting in a park or something. Yeah, it's an easy go story. 
So we must be careful and select appropriate story because at the end of the day, it is lessons you want for people to learn out of what you are saying. You're not just talking. So it is not enough to say or call yourself a storyteller, but you end up sharing the wrong story at the wrong places. So audience analysis is very, very important when we want to build the skills in storytelling. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, Mrs. Soforata says, yes, we need very good stories. And Dr. Gina says, thanks so much, Dr. Susie. God bless you for the wonderful insight you've shared about telling our stories. All right. So on that note, we're going to ask Doc to give us her closing <laughs> remarks and uh, her parting gifts for us. Doc, your final word. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. I, I am in this space because I have learned the skill in storytelling. I'm a Toastmaster, something I said from the very beginning. And Toastmasters, what we do is to learn the art of storytelling. And there's results when we begin to build skills that we already don't have. And a lot of the skills are not things that are so difficult for us to learn. The point I made is that stories have structure. So you must know how you start. You must also know how you continue. You must also know how you end. So it's very important that we put in time to gather the story. Without a story bank, it's difficult to be relevant in front of people to share story. So everything happens because we are intentional about it. It won't happen because we just wish it. So now that you have heard what I've said, please begin to learn about it, begin to put the skills together, begin to understand your audience and begin to select relevant questions, sorry, relevant stories, and as I said, the best stories are your lived experiences. There's so much about yourself that you haven't told the world yet. Be bold. A point someone was making about what do you share, what don't you share. I find it very difficult when people say, I don't want anyone to know what I'm doing. If you don't let the world know what you have, how can they draw to you? So it's important that you are bold to share what you have, what you know. That is the only way they will stick around you and that is the only way when you say something, it will stick with them. Just as I've shared with you, my name is Akpene. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much, Akpene. Akpene, Akpene Mao. Thank you so much for those sharing. And God really bless you. And guys, um, as Dr. Susie has said, if you want to start learning how to tell your stories, I encourage you to join the Toastmasters. Um, as, I, as she said, I've been talking all my life, but now with Toastmasters, I'm even learning new ways of speaking. So if you want to improve your speaking, if you want to improve your confidence, if you want to learn how to tell your stories, I encourage you to join the Toastmasters Club and you can contact me or Dr. Susie, and we will help you to join the Toastmasters. On that note, I want to thank all of you for spending part of your Saturday evening with us, and we hope that once again, you have been blessed with the lessons. Have a very good night. God bless you, and let's make a date with God tomorrow, Sunday, as we go to church. Good night. God bless you. Thank you once again, Dr. Susie. Bye-bye. We spend a lot of time developing our professions, but we don't spend time developing ourselves. Look, as a leader, as a professional, you have to grow. You have to grow yourself. And to be able to grow yourself, you need to know yourself. A lot of us, are not achieving the maximum we can achieve because we have not invested in our personal growth. So we are bringing you this special studies based on John C. Maxwell's book, The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. And we're going to just spend time with you and help you go through the principles that you need 
to be able to grow your person, to become a better person. Because if you become a better person, you become a better leader, you become a better father, you become a better professional. Do not miss this opportunity as the masterclass is going to be very practical and discussional. It is going to be a limited number of people. So please register now to be part of the program. Okay, I think we didn't 